Hello everyone. Welcome to these timeless and eternal messages, the gift and blessing within your current situation. My name is Lisa Lyle. This is my channel here on YouTube. If you are new, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you so much for being here. And I trust that something here will be supportive to you where you are on your spiritual path at the moment that you come across these messages. Please do take a moment to subscribe to the channel. It really supports the ability of this channel to grow and the ability to reach more beautiful souls such as yourself. If you've been traveling with me for a while, thank you so much for continuing to be here and doing the beautiful work of your heart. So I've been guided to come here today and actually I'm going to keep that card because this is take two because my dogs were out of control in the first one. So um, I have settled them down, I hope. And um, so we are going to uh, touch on that first card that we receive. So I, tr I, I'm feeling that as we connect, there are lots of you in the midst of intense transformation. Um, and you know, you may be feeling rather alone on your journey. You may be feeling confused, unsure of which direction to go. And this message is coming to you just to let you know that you are on the right path. You are exactly where you are meant to be, to be in this moment. And everything that you have experienced up to and including this moment has great purpose. And the purpose is to support your spiritual awakening, your remembering of who you are at your core, at the heart of it all. We are eternal souls. And this vessel, this... Um, bodysuit that we're all in is temporary. And so what we do here while in the bodysuit is in service to our eternal self, to the soul. Um, so the first card that had come out, um, and I'm going to shuffle again from this deck as well, and this is from the Myths of Avalon Oracle. And it's the Sacred Grove and it's number eight. And at the time of recording, the year is 2024, which is a universal eight year. So this is about all of us on the planet, whether you you have the awareness of a stone or whether you are very awake and aware of what is um, taking place on Mother Earth. This is about us and our personal journey. And, you know, I love the fact that this card came out first because it's really what I'm really feeling, oh, I didn't even realize there was a stone there <laughs> that the owl is sitting on. Um, but this is really about each of us having our own personal experience with a loving creator, a loving God that resides within our heart, has been with us since the day we were born, and will remain with us after we transition from this um, human experience. And I love the owl there, really representing that within you is all the wisdom that you need. We often spend uh, a lot of time looking outside of ourselves for the love that we are, looking outside of ourselves for approval from others, looking outside of ourselves for fulfillment and happiness. And the reality is all of those things are within us. So the biggest gift of your current situation is the recognition of your soul's essence, the recognition that you are a spiritual being having a temporary human experience. And there are no hard and fast rules on the spiritual journey. Um, you know, I'm, I would never say to anyone, you must do this because it's really about our own personal development, our own um, relationship with God. And I, I'm going to say God because that's what I believe. And you may not believe in God and that's fine. And yet ultimately, there's this beautiful leaf like just floated past the window. Ultimately, um, I believe that all come home to the loving source that resides within, who 
I call God, who created us all. And then, of course, this card comes out, King Arthur, which is like, I, for many, so I, I'm feeling like many of the viewers are women, feminine, the divine feminine. And this divine masculine is coming through really because I feel that so many women in this lifetime have had to take on multiple roles, the mother, as well as the father, the provider, the nurturer, everything. And you know what? Many are tired, are incredibly tired of doing this double, triple duty all the time. And that is really and truly not the way that God intended. We are meant to be in union and partnership with another. So as a woman, we the intention is to have a strong and supportive and stable man in our experience. And unfortunately, the way that this whole construct has been set up against the children of God, the children of light, there, there's not a lot of divine union that is um, has taken place. And so what I'm feeling for you is that the, the divine masculine energy is really supporting you and saying that it's okay, it's safe for you to soften up. Because as women, we are meant to be soft and nurturing and loving and really um, tender within our experience. And yet this situation that we have all been thrust in into has really hardened a lot of us, right? We've closed off our heart. I am woman, hear me roar. I can do anything a man can do. Well, yes, we can. And yet, are we meant to? No, I don't believe so. And so this is really saying that it's okay to be soft because the divine masculine is truly supporting us. And whether that's just you know, our loved ones in spirit who love us unconditionally, whether it's God, the, the masculine um, energy of God that's loving us, our angels, all of that. And I'm hearing, yes, you are strong. And yes, you are woman. You have done so much. And yet, what is the legacy of love that lives on? This is an opportunity to for a fresh start. A clean slate is what I'm hearing. You're not late. You haven't missed anything. Nothing that is meant for you will ever pass you by. And so what I'm really hearing at this time, it's important for you to relax and settle into your experience, not to allow yourself to be overwhelmed to take the time you need in the sacred grove, the sacred space within your home space, the sacred space that you go to in nature to um, rejuvenate, to be replenished and um, restore balance to your experience. This is, this is what I'm feeling is the biggest gift is the recognition of who you are and everything that you have experienced to this point. I, I'm hearing don't lose heart, don't lose faith. If divine union, if, if partnership with a divine counterpart is something that you desire, it is in the cards for you. It is in your, it is on the horizon and as women, we just have to allow ourselves to really embrace our femininity, right? Embrace who we are, the softness, the, the sensitivities, all of it. And trust that we will um, meet our match. And we don't actually have to go out searching. We don't have to... Um, yeah, we don't have to go on this search. We can just trust that as we nourish and care for ourselves, God, uh, a loving creator, is going to um, present to us this 
opportunity for a beautiful union. No. So let's just see. I think this is the, um, that was the mist of Avalon. So this is the wisdom of Avalon that flew out. Oh, okay. The cow. And in a lot of um, mythology, uh, and I believe in particular in Hindu mysticism, the cow is really about um, the masculine and feminine and, and um, Shakti and Shiva, I believe, ride on the cow. Yet what I'm really feeling here, the color of the cow is white. So I'm really feeling this is about the purity of your heart. So trusting the purity of your heart. And it doesn't make you weak or silly or, um, you know, cuckoo for cocoa puffs or anything like that. The purity of your heart is the most beautiful, the most beautiful part of any human. Um, and, and to live from the purity of the heart that inner child expression is the most beautiful and high vibrational expression of the divine in this lifetime. It's a number 20. So two is about, um, you know, inner vision, inner wisdom, trusting your intuition in the Tarot two is the energy of the high priestess. Um, what does it say here on the card? Nourishment, abundance, ecstasy, I believe. Oh, perhaps my mind is somewhere else. Asking, <laughs> asking and receiving ecstasy. Well, we are meant to have a experience of ecstasy within divine union. Asking and receiving many, 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 many women are givers. We love to give. We love to take care of the people we love. We love to, um, you know, just give, give, give. And sometimes it's we give so much that we deplete ourselves. And this is about the give and take, the balanced exchange of giving and receiving, the balanced exchange of energy. So many of you are being asked at this time to ask for the help that you need and perhaps to pull back a little on the giving, especially if you're feeling unbalanced within your physical body. And if we're giving too much, we may feel a lot of pain in our right neck on the right side of the body because the right is the giving side and the left is the receptive side. The right is the masculine side. The left is the feminine. So really perhaps spending some time in nature, tuning into how your physical body feels, or perhaps you're saying, yes, oh my gosh, Lisa, I feel it. Um, two more cards from this deck. I feel it. I, I feel the disconnect or the discomfort in my physical body. And I'll be honest, I'm feeling a lot of discomfort in the right side of my body at the time of recording. And I've really been working consciously for the last couple of days with my breath and with grounding practices um, to really balance this out. <laughs> That's funny. So the first card I saw here was the serpent. And it's number 23. 23 is my number for 23 and 32 is my number for the divine masculine. <coughs> so it does feel like there is a lot of divine masculine support around for us at this time. The serpent is really like the snake who sheds its skin. It is also a symbol of the healer, right? If we look at our um, real current day, um, symbols for uh health care which you know that's questionable as it, as to whether it's really health care but as we look at these symbols the caduceus for example has two intertwined snakes on the staff the staff of hermes <coughs> excuse me let me just take a drink and so a lot of people look at the snake as oh you know, um, not a good symbol. Personally, I see the snake as the sign of healing. And 
transformation because as you know, as the snake grows, it sheds the old skin that no longer fits. So this really feels like it is at this time you are being guided to focus on your healing, trusting your intuition as to what is right for you. Um, because for each of us, our body knows. And so we have to be willing to listen to our body in order to support our growth in to order to support um, health and wellness in our experience. So keep going. The words on the card are knowledge, I believe, knowledge and healing. So you have all the wisdom within you to overcome whatever you are, um, maybe a challenge in your life currently, as well as to heal from what has been your experience. And there's not many alive upon the planet at this time that have not experienced heartache, trauma, pain. And it usually goes all the way back to childhood under the age of 21. And then the next card we got is the letting go card. And it is a number 44, which is my number. Four is my number for the angelic realms. This is, uh, And this is a master number as well. We don't generally reduce master numbers, but if we did, this would bring us back to the eight, the sacred coal. And so it's important for you to know that you are surrounded by angels who love you unconditionally. My left ear is starting to ring now. You are surrounded by angels who love you unconditionally and seek only for you to experience great abundance, great joy, um, happiness, partnership, communion and union with others, fellowship and friendship. So what is it that you are being asked to, it's 111 at this time at, of recording too, which is more confirmation that we are surrounded by angels and it's up to us to really do the work. Nobody can do it for us uh, and we can't do the work for anyone else. It is a personal journey that we each travel on our own and yet we're never truly alone we are always surrounded by loving beings of light so what is it in your life that you are being asked to let go of and this is the ringmaster of scrutiny and as soon as i see this without looking at what it says on the card or anything what I'm feeling that you're being asked to let go of is the rigidity in the mind, the negative self-talk, the judgment um, that, you know, if you're passing judgment on others, that returns to us tenfold. Uh, so, you know, and as we ju judge others and point fingers, there's always three pointing back at us. So it is always the journey of our soul self in the physical experience and everything that we experience helps us to either move further away from true union and connection with others or to bring us closer to union with the divine that re resides within us and then we become like this beautiful magnet that is drawing to us what is meant for us what is meant to um, enhance our life experience. And sometimes if we're all up in our heads, well, a lot of times when we're all up in our heads, we're really, um, we're just drawing to us that negative experience that we may be continuing to relive or if we're having negative self-talk, um, energy doesn't differentiate between positive and negative. So if we're all in our head negative this is what we're going to see externally so it's really about um, reframing things and and shifting things to the positive and so on the card it says discernment clear vision and details and it's a number nine and nine is also a number of completion because from nine we move to the double digit numbers again that 10 energy that one the magician what is it that you are being asked to transform in your life what is it that you are being asked to let go of and some of you may be like the caterpillar who has 
um, you know, gone to goo, liquefied in the cocoon. And you're like, I don't even know who the heck I am anymore. That's a good thing. Because on the other side of this, you are going to have more clarity uh, about who you truly are. And it's really important to use discernment. And discernment's not judgment. Discernment is allowing, um, allowing space to feel. And, and then again, trusting that. So does this feel right? Does this feel true? And you, even with this message, you may not um, agree with anything I say. Yet, if you're still here watching, I trust that you feel the vibration um, that's coming through, that you feel the uh, healing through the, the transmission of the messages through my voice. So you don't have to like anything I say. You may be ticked off at some of the things I say, and yet you feel um, what rings true for you. And so it's really important that we don't throw, what do they say? That we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. <laughs> um, we, there could be tid, you know, snippets, tidbits of good stuff in here for you. And, and maybe not everything's for you. So trusting your gut, trusting your inner knowing and taking action accordingly. I love this. The spiral dancer, number five again. We had that 23, which comes to a five. But five on its own is about change. So are we willing to change? Are we willing to break the chain and break the cycle of the karmic loop, that karmic wheel, and move on to this beautiful spiral? Um, and it's it's not just like, it's not just a spiral like this. It's like a spiral that goes up and is, it's almost like a drill, you know, like an auger, I think they're called. Um, for making holes in the ground and there's that spiral that goes you know down and I, I always vi visualize us as this spiral and we reach down into the earth as high as we reach into the heavens and this is the spiral of grace you know grace is an unmerit the unmerited gift of God you know and all we need to do is be willing to break cycles, um, heal pain, uh, because we're here on a journey for generational change. And those of you here watching this are doing the work that previous generations were unable to do. And so thank you so much, because now the work that you do, future generations will not have to do because of you. So that is a really, that's beautiful work. That's sacred work. And I always, when I see the spiral dancer, I just think about, you know, young children without a care in the world, just twirling around, dancing. I mean, I still love to do it today. Uh, so it, it's, I feel like there's this call for more play. And as we're going through the thick of transformation, as we are in the midst of challenging situations in our life, we forget sometimes to play. And so if you have forgotten to play, I would encourage you to put on your favorite music today, blast it, sing it loud, and dance and have a good time because dancing and movement really supports to shift energy um, as well and get things moving again if you've been feeling a little dense and um, static. Um, circuitous root, circuitous root, and perception. So is your perception clear? Or are, do you have blinders on and you only see it one way? You're being asked to rise above your current situation and see things from a higher perspective, to see things as um, your loved ones in spirit as God and the angels see you um, because you're really beautiful. You're beautiful. And we got to keep things moving, right? Like if we're not moving, things become stagnant. Things become dense. It becomes hard to move. It's like trudging through mud in rubber boots. 
you know, and perhaps the boot falls off and you got to go back and yank it out. It's not fun. So get moving. I feel that that's the biggest message of that card because you are like the phoenix and you are rising and you are going to rise above and beyond your current situation. And it's a number 29, which comes to an 11. There's those ones again. You are surrounded by your angels and a loving creator who love you unconditionally and see you as this beautiful child of light. And you are asked to no longer live your life in fright, to take delight in the beautiful being that you are, regardless of what, uh, you know, how you may judge yourself and, and what you have done. Now is a time to shift, to change things. And you are the one who has come here to change. Resurrection, surrender to change. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it's really important. Um, I believe, you know, I believe in our dear brother, Jesus. And I believe that the way we are saved in this lifetime is through the acknowledgement and recognition that we are the resurrection of the light at this time. And it's up to us to open up from the inside. And so we're just going to get a couple more cards from this universal, I believe it's the universal wisdom oracle. And so let's see. Okay, they're saying one from here and then one from another deck I have here. Oh, two. Okay. And then I'm going to just pull this one. We're going to get them all here. And... Again, if something's resonated with you, please let me know in the description box below. If you're interested in a personal reading with me, details will be in the description box below. Um, you can just visit my website, lisalyle.com. If you are interested in an intuitive healing session, um, check it out. Check out my website. Everything is done distantly. You receive your own private videos, playlists, um, and yeah. So, and it is always my honor and privilege to serve. Look at this. He said two more cards and they're saying four. So, let's see. Okay. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay. So, from the Universal Wisdom, we've got the lilac mist, a lot of butterflies in this reading. You are in the midst of transformation. And the biggest thing that's, um, I, the biggest gift is that you are beginning to trust your intuition more and more. And it's leading you towards more joy, more creation, more abundance, more health, you know, um, and trust your imagination. Trust your imagination. Your third eye is opening. So you working, making sure too, if you, to decalcify the third eye, right? Like all the toothpaste that we use has fluoride in it. It's a neurotoxin, which makes, um, calcifies the third, excuse me, the third eye, which is the pineal gland. So it makes it like bone. So decalcify that. You can do that by first and foremost, stop using toothpaste with fluoride in it. And secondly, working with um, amethyst, uh, on the third eye and it may be a bit painful initially most changes and most clearing of toxins and, and heavy energies out of our body is painful you will get to the other side of it drink lots of water you're not dying um, everything's going to be okay and then we have and this beauty is the same beauty on the deck um, on the box that this deck comes in aradia and more butterflies your truth is beautiful. Speak your truth. Honor your truth. Um, accept the truth of your situation as it's been. Anything that happened before this moment cannot be changed. You, though, can change um, the experience through your healing journey. So change is necessary. Truth, throat chakra opening up. How are you speaking to yourself? What are the things that you're saying? Are they true? Are they kind? Are they necessary? If you're speaking poorly to yourself, chances are you're speaking poorly to others. 
And we're not here to create more wounds. We are here to heal. And so your healing is a gift to the world. Your healing is a gift to your experience. Fork in the road is the next card out. Which way are you going to go? Are you going to keep doing the same old, same old? Because if you continue to do the same old, same old, the results are going to be same old, same old. Or are you going to have the courage to take the unbeaten path to go on an adventure that no one's been on before? Um, and that's the spiritual journey for each of us, right? There, Again, there are no hard and fast rules. The spiritual journey is as diverse and as as we are, you know, and yet at the what is the same between us is our heart is the emotions is the fact that we've all experienced trauma and we've all acted out in response to the trauma and so it's really um the the fork in the road is are you going to take personal responsibility for your life at this time or are you going to continue to live your life on rewind Drink and wine. <laughs> the choice is up to you. And just to complete, finish this out, it is to go with the flow. Let things happen. And it goes back to that let things, letting go card, right? We've had that, yes. Let things go. Water flows, right? And if water gets dammed up and stops and becomes like, swampy it gets stinky it's like <laughs> toxic right and the same is for us and we are 75 80 percent water and so we are meant to flow our emotions are meant to flow they're not supposed to re remain dammed and blocked in our bodies and the space where emotions get blocked in our bodies is between our hips um the sacral chakra so we may act out we may be sexually promiscuous or we may be frigid in that regard. Um, and, you know, neither is great. Um, promiscuity is, in fact, very detrimental to our overall well-being. And it oftentimes activate, activates wounds. And so we really must clear these spaces in our body so that we can flow and allow our emotions to flow as women we are meant to be soft we are emotional we are um, we just have to look at how our body the workings of our body on a monthly basis just like the you know the moon we are the moon is a feminine energy and it's really about um, you know we wax and we wane you know and and we come to fullness and then we start waning again and then we go dark we go quiet and you know there's a lot to be said about that and there's a lot to be said about um really the divine the divine feminine restoring herself to her proper place within her experience uh and knowing that your sensitivities your emotions your healing is truly a gift to the world, truly a gift. And if you're not feeling very fluid and flowing, and uh, when I mean fluid, like very water-like, um, and flowing, perhaps there's a need to drink more water. Perhaps there's a need to go and sit near water. Put your feet in the water. Um, have a bath. Spend some time hanging out in the tub. Because, like, if you look at the image on here, that goddess is experiencing pure joy. And I believe, look at that. She's riding on the backs of flying fish. How cool is that visual, which really just speaks to our imagination, right? Like, I always like to imagine like riding on the back of a dragonfly and experiencing life from that perspective. And this will help us to see ourselves and our situations and others from that higher perspective that we were asked to see things from. I'm just really feeling let your imagination go. Um, the world is your oyster. 
and you are the pearl within the oyster. So know that all those challenging situations, you know, the pearls made through the sand and they're gritty and, you know, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good. And yet that pearl is magnificent, right? And that is who you are. And so trust that whatever you're going through at this time, it is really in support of you coming back to your beautiful heart and beginning to heal all those things that have left scars upon your heart and perhaps have closed you off from having an expansive, joyful experience of life at this time. So I feel like that's it. I'm not uh, being guided to continue any further. So I trust that something here has been supportive to you. Um, please do let me know in the comments down below. Hit the subscribe button. Thumbs up if you're still here. And know that I see you. I feel you. I love you. And I am eternally grateful for your presence in my life at this time. So until next time, everyone, take good care of yourselves.